Hi y'all. I don't know if you saw my last video, but I'm Dawn and I'm trying to open a museum. I'm trying to get people interested in this idea of a museum slash learning center that I want to get going. Uh, and I did promise to, that in my last video that I would start showing you stuff from around the world that I have collected and my mother has collected and been collected through several lifetimes actually uh, and passed down through generation to generation. Majority of it is shells and I'm going to lead off the video the starting the showing you things with a shell. Surprise, surprise. This is a marbled cone. It's mainly found in the Indian Ocean. Um, not a particularly rare cone. Can sting you though if you pick it up alive, so you might want to be careful if you're in, in that area and you want to collect shells. Do not pick this up alive. It will hurt. Um, it's not one of the most deadly cones, but why that particular cone is interesting to me despite all the cones I have and I do have a fair amount but I'm only showing you one today is this painting now if you can see it there we go there's a little glare from the camera and whatnot but basically that is a painting of watercolor by William Will Willem Rabiage I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong but there's his name I will drop a link below to uh, get a little biography on him if you're interested. He has been hung in the Netherlands, Iceland, Morocco, Germany, Ireland, and France. Never been hung in the United States. I have one of his originals and it is signed by him. So that is an interesting little study and a piece that I think would be great to share in a learning museum to get people, inter ch particularly children, interested in different things from around the world and having cross sections of sea life with different things that you can be interested in sea life for from art. There are other things I have, I just don't have them here today, like stamps. I actually have a stamp with the same cone on it. So you can see how it could draw children's interest that they don't have to go to these exotic places or collect things, that, you know, the actual shell, they can be interested in collect art or stamps or other things. And it's just a good educational thing. and stories and stuff like that get children interested. How my mother really got me interested in shells was kind of a weird story. When I was born, before I was really aged to get interested in, she had found, well, come across a cowrie shell that was commonly called the Dawn Cowrie. Me being named Dawn, she wanted the Dawn Cowrie because it was the name of her daughter. So she knew someone going on an exhibition, uh, to Africa to go looking for shells. So they asked her, they asked him, sorry, to try to find the Dawn Cowrie. They were unsuccessful in finding a live specimen that technically is museum quality. This of course was way back in 1973. This is the one they got. It's very weather beaten and what they did get, this was from 1973. Don't, oop, I don't know if you'll be able to see the hole on camera. Uh, probably not getting blurry but basically this was found oh you can kind of see it there uh, the only re way they were able to find this back then was on a person's necklace and he bought it off of the necklace and it's really not a good representative of what this cowrie looks like but I'll give you another good look at it I do have some more specimen qualities that I will show you in 1983 she was involved with the same shell they were going on regular places around the world to look for shells and she again requested the dawn cowrie tried to find it and this time the man was successful and he brought back this one um we do have two others that i'll show you they're basically the same um i can't i can only show one at one at a time but these here were gotten later on and you can see those the animal when it's alive is a complete jet black and it comes out over the shell and that's why the shell is smooth because it comes out like from here and loops over the shell to move and they need the smoothness of the shell to move. That is the Latin name. Again, I don't claim to speak Latin in any way. This is the common name. Second is the basic Latin name and the third basic thing on the page is the family it is. It's in the Cyperdae family which basically means it's a cowrie. Um, that's basically all for today. It's just a short video. Just wanted to get out there, say hi, show you a couple things. I will bring other things in the future and 
hopefully some stories and information about them. Hope to see you again. If you like this video at all, if you like shells, if you like the, my idea of an educational center, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment back to me, let me know your ideas, let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear from you. I will try to answer everyone back. Have a great day. Bye for now.